Hello boys and girls, good afternoon and welcome to Critical English for grades 6 to 7. I am Tamika Wilson and today I am filling in for Miss Monique who is unavailable today. Alright, so hello, it's nice to meet you. Um, let's talk about who you are. So I'm going to speak to you. Um, I am, of course, as I said before, Tamika Wilson. I am a teacher who teaches English. And so tell me about, tell me about you guys so we can be familiar. Tell me your name and what you would like to become. My name is Tiana and I would like to become an artist. An artist. Wow, nice. Yes. My name is Alicia Haywood and I would like to become an artist also. Oh, nice. So here is what. Today I will teach you English and probably when we get some time you can teach me how to become an artist so that we can be three artists together yes sounds like a plan all right good do any of you like reading mm, not necessarily a little bit a little bit just a little bit hello good afternoon welcome so we're just getting to know each other i'm filling in for miss today uh, so tell me a little bit about you. What is your name and what you would like to become? I'm Azaria. I don't know what I want to become as yet. Mm -hmm. That's fine and that's, that's, that's quite fine because sometimes we don't always uh, go with the goal that we would like, would have liked. At age 12, I wanted to become a journalist, but I'm a teacher today. Yes? All right, so we were talking about reading. So um, Tiana, Give me a little, I don't know if I, a little cold shoulder in terms of reading. What about you, Alicia? Do you like reading? Kind of. Kind of. And what about you? I like reading. Remind me of your name again. Azaria. Azaria. Azaria, Alicia, Tiana. Yes. A little bit. A little bit. Mm. All right. So when you're doing reading, um, what sort of draw you to reading? Well, Tiana, we, we were hoping that by the end of the session, we can convince you to come over to a place of liking to read a little bit, yeah? Okay, so um, Alicia, what draws you to reading? Like, mm -hmm. the, how fun it can be, like the characters. The characters, yes. Uh -huh. And how they play a role in the story. Play a role in the story. But like, for instance, if you, if you see something that says um, horror, would you read it? Mm. Yeah? Why? Because I would like to... You want to see what's inside, all right? So what is the first thing that we see when we interact with any bit of reading material? So that it helps us to decide whether we want to read it or not. It begins with a T. The title. The title, yes. So today we're doing comprehension. We're looking at understanding the title um, and making predictions. All right? So we're doing comprehension. You would have done comprehension before, yes? yes. And what do you remember about comprehension? Mm. Reading passage and answer questions. Don't yes. tell me that. More or less? <laughs> all right so comprehension is one of the language skills that we have to develop all right the word comprehend means to understand and in order for us to understand there are certain things that we must be able to do all right and one of the most one of the important things that we have to do first and foremost when we're looking at a comprehension passage is to understand the title yes to look at the title and the type why do we need to do this because when we look at the title, it tells us what we're going to look at. And that can preempt a response in terms of interest. So it can um, appeal to us and call us to read it. Or it can dissuade us from reading. Because if I see something that says horror, I will not be reading that. Because I don't do horrors at all. Right? So, as big as I am. But if I see something that says romance, it draws me too reading it yes so the title helps to draw us in it helps to give insight into what can possibly be there all right 
And, and what we are doing there is that we are making prediction based on what we see, the title, all right? To tell us what we might uh, think about when we make predictions, what are we doing? We're saying that what we think may happen, all right? So let's look at our passage for today. Our passage for today, just open the booklets. We're on page six. On page six, and we are reading. We are reading the race. Now, let's look at the title. When we look at the title and this title, what do you think? So the first thing I want you to do is to write down five things that you think will happen in this story. So go ahead, get writing. Five things that you think will happen in this story. Title, The Race. Without looking at the, the bit of reading, we're just looking at the title now, yes? Now we're gonna come to it. around to peek into your work to see what you think and a minute more are we done no we need like a, a minute to finish off yes Are we get are we to five? Five is probably a hard one. So we stop at four then? Yeah. Four? Alright, let's stop at four. All right, so let's let's hear what you have. So what were you expected to do? You were to state what you think the story is going to be about, yes? And that is what we call making prediction. So based on the title. Now let's hear what you have, Tiana, and then we go around with the, the table and come back. We have a list of all. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have someone may win a prize. Someone may win a prize, yes. Someone may get injured while running someone may get and injured while running mm -hmm. many people will be shouting or cheering many people will be shouting or cheering That's all right so so what allowed you to to sort of make those prediction 
because the title says it's a race. Mm -hmm. I basically know what goes on in a race. Yes. Now, that's another skill that we're going to look at, right? Or another thing that helps us with comprehension. Previous, we call it previous knowledge. So, based on the title, we made predictions based on what? Previous knowledge, the things that we knew before, all right, about this title. Everyone did that? Did you do something different? Mm -hmm. In terms of how you responded to the question? Yes? No? Yeah. Uh, we still? Yes, yeah. so predict pr our previous knowledge. Previous knowledge is things that no experience that we would have, knowledge that we would have gathered in the past based on experience. That's what, what, what accounts or accumulates and, and, and accounts for previous knowledge, all right? So based on previous knowledge, when we look at this title, The Race, that's how we came up with our predictions. And so Tiana said, someone may get hurt, someone may, min, may win a prize, um, there may be shouting and screaming because in her experience, that is what took place at a race. All right, let's hear from you. Uh, remind me of your name again. Azaria. Azaria. All right, remind me of your... your... Tell me what you have, Azaria. Mm, I have what type of race? What type of race? Because so you're asking a question. Yeah. What type of race? Yes. Uh -huh. Distance. The distance. All right. Where it's held. Pardon? Where it's, Where it's held. held. So what Azaria did was to ask questions that she's hoping, I'm guessing, she wants to be answered at the after we would have read the story. Yes? Yes. So that's interesting. And I like that. You want to go into go in the story with, with a curiosity. You want to know what, what kind of race is going to happen. What's the other question? Where? where it's happening and the distance whether it's a long race or a hundred meter sprint or so right so good point but what we're looking at is to make prediction what do you think will happen in the story as against asking questions but that's a good strategy too all right good strategy it kept it helps to keep your brain going so let's hear what you have alicia there'll be a group of competitors who will compete each other in a race. Group of competitors who will compete against each other. Yes, good job. And there'll be also persons cheering the runners. Persons cheering the runners, yes. At the end of the race, there will be a trophy represented to the winner. Yes. So again, in Alicia's thing, in Alicia's response, we can see that those responses are based on what? Previous knowledge, based on your experience of what a race is, yes? Good, so we did two things. We started to look at the title, right? And we said initially that we need to look at the title so that we can have an understanding of, or it basically arises our curiosity or sometimes dissuades us from, from reading, right? But the title is important and we have to have a title because it sort of guides our mind to something. All right, as against, let's say this did not have a title. Let's take out the race. What do you think would have happened here? We would, have not had, we would not have had any central point, would we? We'd have been looking at it and like, okay, all right. We don't necessarily know what's going on. So the title catches us, it draws us in, all right? It gives us some bit of information about what we might meet later on in the piece of writing that we are going to study. Because we're not just studying for comprehension, we don't only study stories. We do poems, we do many other things. And you're coming into secondary school and you'll see what some of those things are. All right? Good. So now we're going to go to read the, the composition, right? And what I want you to do is to follow in your handbook and after that, while we're reading, we're going to see if any of the information that we predicted happens here. All right? So we, at the end of it, we're going to try to match to see whether our predictions were correct, almost correct, 
or they were not correct at all. All right? Sounds fun? Okay, so I'm going to read. The race adapted from the breakaway. Despite the fact that Kofi's knee were trembling, his stomach felt funny and his head felt slightly dizzy. He managed to walk to his place in the starting line. But once he arrived at the starting line, he knew what he had to do and he calmed down. Kofi heard the words, on your mark. The race was about to begin. Kofi looked at his competitors. The runners had drawn lots for their lanes. Kofi had drawn lane two, but he still thought he was lucky. Why? Because Axel in lane one. Because Axel was in lane one. And Axel was the slowest thing on two feet. He couldn't win even if the feet of all the other runners were tied together. But then Kofi noticed that Troy was in lane three. The uneasy feeling in Kofi's stomach returned. Troy was really a force. He was tall, slim, and very strong, and he had a reputation for speed. A reputation, sorry, for speed. But when Kofi heard set, he bent over, put his feet in the blocks and his hands on the ground. His body felt as tight as a spring in a mouse trap. The word go was like a gunshot in Kofi's ears. Kofi blasted out of the blocks and focused his entire body and mind on the destination, the finish line. The race was on. All right, good. So, Tiano. Tell us, were your predictions correct? Some of it, um, almost. Some of it. Some of it. So it means that, you know, you had a little idea of what a race is, right? So your predictions were, some of them were correct. What, what, what from your prediction was correct? Um, basically, um, people were shouting because the person that started the race shouted mm -hmm. on your mark and so on. Yes, yeah, so you can hear persons in the background. So you asked some question. Were you able to have those questions answered? Mm. Azaria. Uh, only two, two of them were answered, or mostly one, mm -hmm. because the distance of the race. Mm -hmm. wasn't fully answered no uh, no so we don't know and then it stopped so it stopped with what we call a cliffhanger we ha have we ever heard that word before a cliffhanger when it well so a cliffhanger is when something ends abruptly and in this case we don't know what happens at the end of the race right Alicia it just says the race was on so we don't know if Axel was indeed the slowest runner. We don't know if Kofi actually won the race. We don't know if Troy won the race. We don't know any of those things. All right. So it left us. The story ended abruptly. So as readers, we can make our own ending, which we are going to do. All right. So go ahead, um, Alicia. What about your predictions? Yes, so some of your predictions were correct, all right? So remember, we said that we make prediction based on what? Previous knowledge. So we go into reading with some amount of knowledge in our head, and it helps us to have a better understanding of the material that we are reading. We can relate to this, yes? We've all been to school sports, yes? Well, we haven't been to school sport for the past two years because of the pandemic. But prior to that, we had school sports. Yes? Okay. All right. So we have completed, we've completed reading. Did you enjoy the, did you enjoy the composition? Yes. Yeah, so we want to see what happens next. All right. Good. So now, in order for us to test whether you understood, because that's, that's what, the key thing about comprehension is being able to read, understand, interpret, analyze, all right? All of these big words that we're going to get 
to when we get into secondary school. But the key thing about comprehension is being able to read something and understand what we would have read. Now, in order for us to know whether we understood what we would have read, we have questions. So back to Tiana when she said, um, when I asked what you remember about comprehension and she said passage and questions, yes? But it should not be passage and question. Comprehension should be an engaging discussion where you learn skills to help you answer these questions. All right? So I've got five questions for you. I'm going to put them on the board and then you're going to answer them for me. Yes? Okay. So let me know if it's clear. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Yes, miss. Yes? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> All right. The first question says, why was Kofi's knees trembling? The second question says, who was, the second question asks, sorry, Kofi afraid of and why? Three. Why wasn't Kofi afraid of Axel? How did Kofi out with his fear of his opponent. Fear of the other. Runner. And the final question. Did you find the story interesting yes or oh, no why all right so let's go through the questions all right so the first question asks us the first question, what does the first question ask of us? Why was Kofi's knees trembling? Hmm? Do we know? Yeah. Why? Because Kofi was nervous. He was? Nervous. nervous. And when we can find that evidence in the first line of the story, despite the fact that Kofi's knees were trembling, his stomach felt funny, and his head felt slightly dizzy. All of these are symptoms or all of these are actions or or how we feel when we are nervous have you ever been nervous mm -hmm. yes so we can sort of associate with how Kofi felt yes good the next question says what who was Kofi afraid of and why he was afraid of Alex Alex Axel Axel 
Was he afraid of Axel? No. No, he was not afraid. You can try again, Azaria. He was afraid of Troy. Yes, he was afraid of Troy. Why? Because Troy has a record for running fast. Yes, so Troy was like the, um, the, the champion, at, perhaps the champion athlete, right? So he's looking over and you answered sort of the next question. So Kofi was afraid of Troy because of his reputation, because of his reputation for speed and the fact that he was tall slim and strong all right usually if we if so let's put ourselves in Kofi's um shoe had you been in that race how you how would you have felt when you look across and saw Troy I would have felt as if I'm gonna lose you can yes what about you Alicia given that you know you're you're tiny like me so how would you have felt I would have felt really nervous nervous what about you Scared, a little. Scared, all right, because this seems to be the champion athlete. All right, why wasn't Kofi afraid of Axel? Yes, because, because Axel was slower than him. Axel, it says what? Let's go back to the and that's, that's interesting how the writer describes Axel. Because Axel was in lane one and Axel was the slowest thing on two feet. Very insultive, eh? Imagine somebody telling you you're the slowest thing on two feet. How would you feel? Not nice, eh? Bad. Good. But, and so that's why he wasn't afraid of Axel because he knew Axel was no competition at all. But he knew that Troy was his competition. Yes? And then the fourth question says, how did Kofi dealt with his fear of the other runner? What did he do? He gathered himself together, isn't that so? Bent down. But when Kofi heard set, he bent over, put his feet, so he got into position. He sort of gathered himself together and just remember why he came to run in the first place. All right? So he got ready. And when the whistle, when the word go went, he just left, dashed out, right? Doing what he came to do, all right? So he overcome his fear by doing what he came to do initially, all right? Did you find the story interesting? Yes or no? And why? Yes, no, why? No? We don't know and I've lost them completely. Yes, because like part of it is a bit funny. Yes. Uh-huh. What about you, Tiana? Yeah, because in part of the story, it seems to have like a little... A little? A little like... Um, All right, see. So you enjoy it? Yes. All right. So we are completed for today. So these are questions and we have gone through them together as a group. All right. And I am, we're out of time. So I'm going to give you the questions. I'm going to leave the questions with Miss so you can have them. I'm leaving the resources with you so you can have them. Um, and we'll talk about this later some other time if I see you again. Yes. But before we wrap up, I have a game I want to play. This game is called hot potato. So we're going to imagine that this is a hot potato and we're going to pass it around. And when it stops, when I say boom, somebody's going to answer and tell me what you've learned so that we can conclude the lesson. Now, today we looked at two things, understanding the title and making predictions. Prediction. So you're going to tell me about those two things. So starting at Tiana, um, Tiana, go, 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 boom. Yes. Zaria, tell us what. Why we need to understand the title. The title is important so the person will know what they're reading about. Mm -hmm. So 
so I know if they would read it or not. Mm -hmm. Like some people don't like horrors cause they give them nightmares. Okay, yes. So let's go again. And we down, 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 down. Boom, 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 boom. Look at, look, look, look at Tiana. <laughs> boom. Yes, Tiana, it's at you. So let's hear. Tell, tell us about making prediction. I learned that like, um, if you had past experience, you can be better at making predictions. Prediction, because it helps us to have a better understand. Sort of, it gives us an edge of understanding, like for instance, the title, the race. Because we would have had previous experience, we've all been to school sport, we sort of know what to expect. And it helps us to, ease, to, ease, um, to make predictions easier, all right? And when we make predictions, what does it help us to do? It helps us to, it provides a guide into completing our, into understanding our reading. And when we get into the reading, right, we realize that some of the predictions can may be true, or some of them may be false, or it may not be as accurate as we presented it, all right? But all in all, it helps us to have a better understanding of the piece that we are engaging with. And that is the purpose of comprehension to be able to read a material and understand what we would have read all right thank you ladies for having me this afternoon thank you viewers and we will see see you in the next class please stay tuned for math which is next
Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our session, Critical Math, grade seven, uh, grade six to seven. Um, on our previous session, we examined factors, multiples, and the greatest common factor. Today, our session, in our session, we will examine the lowest common multiple. All right. In today's session as well, we are hoping to wrap up our session on factors and multiples, and we would like to play a game. Jeopardy involving our factors, multiples, lowest common multiple, and also the greatest common factor. So everything that we have learned in the previous uh, three session, we'll try to wrap up in this uh, session today. So let's begin. All right, so in our previous sessions, we have we need to go back before we can come forward. We examine factors. We looked at multiples. Right? And we examine our uh, greatest or highest common factor. So in our session today, we will look at the lowest common multiple, and we're going to use that using our prime factorization method, right? So we're, we started off um, our highest common factor method using the prime factorization method. So to make life a little easier for us and for yourself, right? We will continue with the prime factorization method to make life a little easier for us, all right? So... Let's start out, so we have a, let me have a table here. We set up a table, we leave some space. All right, not too much. All right, so here we'll have the numbers. And in, in this particular example that we're gonna be going through, we will examine, um, Two numbers right we can have two or more numbers but we're looking at two numbers so we're gonna have two numbers then we have to check out the uh, prime factorization all right then we're gonna examine or find the greatest greatest slash highest sorry sorry not greatest it's the lowest common multiple. Sorry. I'm mixing up my concept here. It's the lowest common multiple. And then how, remember the last time when we were examining the greatest common factor, right? We say that we can use it to um, reduce fractions or we can express fractions in their simplest terms. So it's used here to more or less um, when you want to add and subtract fractions, right? With varying or different denominators, right? So it's used really in, in fractions. That's just one example. All right, so our first two numbers, we'll have 15 and 18. 15 and 18. All right, so in terms of prime factors, we can express 15 in terms of its primes, right? What's the lowest prime? Three? Followed by? Five. five. Right? Here as well, we'll add 18 right here. Now notice 18 is even, so our smallest prime would be? Two. Two. Followed by 9. We can break down 9. All right? 3 and 3. All right. 3 and 3. Very good. So what we need to do next is to um, set up our numbers in such a way that we can examine the, the prime factor. So 15 equals uh, 3 times 5. All right? Uh, 18 equals 
uh, two, that's right, it's a little bit better. So it's two times three times three. All right, so look here carefully. So here, notice we have a tree here and a tree here. So we will account for these here because this is common, we are coming for them once, right? So it means then our highest, um, sorry, lowest. Our LCM, our lowest common multiple, equals, so we need to take that two. We have two trees, so we take it once. We have another tree. And then we have a five. So when we multiply all these factors here, how much are we going to have? What's our total? Two, three, six. Fifteen. And then three, five, fifteen. Fifteen, six is? Nine. Ninety. Okay. Table-wise. Ninety. Great. So, in terms so it means then for the set of multiples, so the set of multiples between 18 and 15, right? 90 would be the smallest or the, sm or the least multiple among the set of multiples between 15 and 18. So that's what we mean by LCM, all right? So 15 has a set of multiples, right? 15 would be the minimum or the smallest multiple. And it's like you're saying your 15 times table, all right? And then uh, for 18, 18 would be the minimum or the smallest multiple if you're going to say your 18 times table. I think you follow? So when you compare 15 and 18, you will see that 90, right, would be the common multiple among the set of multiples, but it would be the least of them or the smallest among the set. That's what we mean by LCM. All right? So in terms of so how do we use it really? Um, so if you have a fraction, for example, uh, let's say it's uh, let's say it's one over fifteen plus uh, let's say four over eighteen, something like that, right? So it means because their denominators are different, it means you have to find a common. LCM or in some terminologies it would say a common um, denominator in this case it's going to be 90 so we are not really concerned about working it out here as to what we're going to get all right all right so you have a common denominator so that you can work out whatever the fraction is in terms of whether it's an addition or whether it's in uh, in terms of a subtraction are we clear? Any questions so far? Yeah. Good. Another example um, I think you have probably learned in school is to the, the method of division. I don't know if you can remember um, if you're... I'll, you get back here in a bit. So if your teacher probably show you something like that. You have 15, then you had 18. And then you keep dividing, dividing. Yeah. Right, so you learn that in school. So there, there are many ways in which you can, you can do it as well. Right? And um, this method is also using the um, prime factorization method, but you're using it in terms of a division, repeated division, until you get one. Right? You can start off here with, with three. Right? You can start off with three. Three into 15, that's five. Three into 18, that's six. six. And then you can start off here with 5. There's no particular order. Once you get the prime factors, 5 into 5, 1. 5 can go into 6. So you put back 6. And then the next prime would be 2 here. 2 can go into 1, so you write it back. 2 can go into 6 3 times. And then you start off with a 3. All right? 3 can go into 1, you write it back. 3 into 3, 1. So the end result here is for us to get the 1s in the end. And then you see LCM equals 3 times 5 times 2 times 3 again, which is supposed to give us the same value that we had previously, which is 90. Right. So you learned that at school. 
right? So the trees more or less give you a visual as well. So you can either use, if you're comfortable using the division, that's fine. And if you find the, um, the factory tree easier, that's also fine. So, right? So you don't have to stick with one method. You can try various methods or if you're comfortable, whichever one you're comfortable with, that's the one you more or less work with. So, but you have options. That's all. All right, good. So let's try two other numbers. I know we started off using a table. Uh, so we can, so let's try, let's say if you have 15 and 20. So who wants to go first? All right, so who wants to go first? Wonderful. Alicia wants to go first. So Alicia, is in terms of prime factorization, right? So prime factors. All right, so let's check out 15. So 15 we have. Three times five. Three times five, great. Uh, you can put uh, 20 here as well, just right at the bottom here. So 20, it's even, so we start off with two first, right? So two, 10, and then 10 gives us two. Nice. So hence, 15 equals three times five, all right? 20 equals two times two times times five so what do you notice we have we have a pair here great so then lcm equals so notice we don't we do not have any pairs here so we have to take um, the twos two times two and we take all right, and then we take the five how many times? Two times or one time? Once. Great. So working that out gives us? Six. Six yeah. Wonderful. All right, so she has our first LCM, 60, between 15 and 20. All right. There you go. So once you understand the concept, we can roll. So who's going to take, we're going to go with 15 and 35 next. So you have somewhere to build from. So let's go. Who's going to take 15 and 35? 15 and 35. Azario, you want to go? Mm. 3. And 5 going to 15. Right, so 15 would be 3, followed by 5. All right, 35 would be. Mm. It ends in 5, so you can be divided by 5. So 5 would be a prime. So 5 and. Five and 7. Great. Any other thing? No. No. So 15 equals 3 times 5 all right 35 equals let's put the 5 at the back here and the 7. the order doesn't really matter because it's commutative because i wanted the some of the numbers to line up so here we have a common here common there so lcm of 15 and 35 equals 3 multiplied by 5. 3 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7. So what's the number there? Mm. You, can, you can multiply it in your book. Mm. Anyone could say it? Give, yeah. her, give her a chance because it's, um, it's her question, right? 
105. Wonderful. So we have Alicia on top and we have Azaria on top. So it's now Tiana's time. All right. So Tiana, you're going to get a very tough one. <laughs> 55 and 88. Let's see how we go with 55 and 88. Good. So 55. Um, eleven and five. Fifty-five. Right, so it's five. Eleven. eleven. Any other thing? No. No. Great. Eighty-eight. Mm -hmm. It's eight and eleven. Oh, Alright. So we can go with eight and eleven, that's fine. Okay. But then we need to break down eight into Two and four. Two and four. And then we need to break down four. Two and two. Mm hmm Two and two. So you have to keep your head on as to where the factors are, right? Eh? Okay, where the prime factors are. So five to five equals five times eleven. Eight equals what are the values? Two by two by two. Two by, by two by two, that's three times. And then we have a eleven. Great. So LCM of fifty-five and eighty-eight equals. So we have a pair here. Cool. So what am I, what am I writing here? Um Two by two. Two by two. By two. By two. By five by eleven. By five by eleven. What's the number? So you're doing it mentally. That's all right. Take your time. 440. 440? Right. Yeah. It's 440. A huge number. Right? So it's like saying you're 55 times table. So you have a whole set of numbers there. And 88 times table. And then 440 is going to pop up. All right? As the common between 55 and 88. Great, so everybody got their questions correct today. Wonderful. You can give yourself a little pat on the back, you know? <laughs> Congrats to you. All right, so any questions on, it, on LCM? Mm -hmm. All right, so what happens, so what we're gonna do next is that we're gonna examine um, everything that we've learned so far as it relates to factors, multiples, greatest common factor, and lowest common multiple. We're going to see how you um, grasp the concept um, in a particular game, all right? So let me switch out here. Uh, just give me a second. Yes. That's all right. Hmm. Where is my game? Where is my game? All right, just give me one second. Let me load the game. Uh, So we're going to play a um, game here. We have, oops, 
All right, so we're gonna have three players, all right? So we're gonna choose three players. So each one of you will choose an avatar. All right, so we have three players. So, okay, let's start with, uh, <laughs> with Alicia first. What's it? Choose your avatar. The last one. The last one. Pick me. All right, so Azaria, who's your avatar? The first one. The first one, great. So you got to remember your avatar, all right? And then we have Tiana. Who's your avatar? The second to last. Second to last. Wonderful. Great. All right. Let's wait a bit for her. All right. So here it goes. So you're going to go first. So you remember your avatar, right, Alicia? So you're going to choose... Um, so you choose a category, right, based on the value that you have, and that's the amount of points you're going to get, all right? So, so you have three categories here. We have factors, multiples, and then we have GCF and LCM. So, Alicia, pick your category. You're number one. You're player one, right? So, pick your category. Multiples. Multiples for how much? 100, 200, 300, or 400? 200. 200. Great. So this is your question. 40 is a multiple of which of the following numbers? Eight. She said eight. <coughs> She's correct. Wonderful. Player two, who's player two? Zaria. All right, so that's your avatar, all right? Which category? Factors, multiples, GCF and LCM. GCF, 400, 200, 300, or 4? 300. 300. So, as you go down the line, the questions get harder, right? All right. Mm -hmm. So, what is the least common multiple of 6 and 15? You can take some time, too. We're not putting any um, time limit on you. Okay, now. But, so, see how quickly you can work it out? What is the least common multiple of 6 and 15? Pum, 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 pum. So we have 30, 90, 80, and 3. Three. Read the question correctly, you know, not factor, multiple. So we just found the multiple, least common multiple, right? So just remember the steps. Just remember the steps. So write down the factors for six. All right. Come on. Write down your factors for six. And then all right, and then write the factors for 15 in terms of prime factors. All right, all right, do your multiplication now and see what, what is the LCM. Very well. 30. <laughs> Correct. Alright, player 3. Tiana. That's your avatar. Category. Multiples. Multiples for? 400. 400. You're going out big. Nice. Ah, a number is a multiple of 6 if. So you remember in our session we were saying divisibility when we were talking about divisibility, right? All right, so this is that question. A number is a multiple of six if the sum of no, that's its last two digits form a number divisible by six. Is that what is that? The last digit is six. 
the sum of all its digits is divisible by three and the last digit is even. So that means it's also the divisible by. Yeah, it well it mean the number is even. Two. Wonderful. Okay. I just realized. Yes. <laughs> all right, player one, we're back at you. Category. Factors for 300. Great. Which of the following numbers are factors of 1710? The number is 1710. So if we can remember in our session with divisibility as well. So this is a divisibility question, but you have to check it for various numbers here. All right. So look at the options that you have. We have two, five, seven, ten. In some cases, there is a four and an eight. So remember the visibility by two. The number has to be even, All right? Is the number even? Very well. Um, if the number ends in zero, it means it's divisible by ten, and it's also divisible by five. So you have three narrowed down there. And then we have, what we have next? We don't have any, oh, we have a tree. So what's the rule as it relates to divisibility by tree? If you add up the digits and it's a multiple of tree, well, then the number is divisible by tree. So is it divisible by tree? Add up the digits. Claire, so which answer, which choice is your answer? The second one. The second one? Let's check. You're correct. Wonderful. Player two. Category. Multiple. Multiples for? 300. 300. So it's player two. Multiples for 300. All right. How many multiples does 10 have? How many multiples do you think exist for, for, for 10? It's like saying you're 10 times able. So you know what you're, you're 10 times able? Great. So how many, you, how many multiples are you going to get? 5, 10, 100, 4. How many are you going to get? Will it ever end? No. So the answer is infinity. Exactly. Infinity. Ooh. Player tree. That's your avatar. Choice. Factors for hundred. Factors for hundred. Good. Which number is a factor of eighteen? Nine. Nine. Great. Back at player one. Which category? LCM. LCM for? 400. 400. That's a biggie. That's a biggie. Ah. Which pair of numbers has 60 as their least common multiple? Twelve and thirty. Twelve and thirty. She's choosing them. Ooh, she's correct. Alright, player two. Category? Factors. Factors for? 200. 200. Great. Which number is a factor of 111? One, one, one. 111. Alright, so you, um, remember, you missed out that class on divisibility, so. So which number is a factor of 111? Can any one of you help her with this question? Um, uh, Go on. Like 
explain. Yeah, which number, which number, which of the set of these numbers here would be a factor um, of 111? All right, it can be two because the number is an odd number, right? One, 111 is an odd number. So if you try three, for it to be divisible by three, right? When you add the digits, digits have to, add up to, to give a number that can be multiple of three. three. So when you add one, one, and one, you're getting three. So is it divisible by three? One and one is two. Two and one is three, right? So it's just gonna be divisible by three. So if it's divisible by the number, well the number is a factor of it. Alright? So here we'll have three. Alright. Third player category? Factors four hundred. Factors for what four hundred. Four hundred. Great. Which two numbers are relatively prime? Now, relatively prime, this was a concept that was not covered, but it means they have one, right? One is common. One is a common factor for this set of numbers. That's what it means. So relatively prime, only one, they have as their common factor. So if you have a set of numbers, if I have um, uh, two and three, I'm just using an example very quickly, right? If I have two and three, the factors of 2 would be 1 and 2. The factor of 3 would be 1 and 3. But So both of them have uh, 1. So they're relatively prime. So you got to check there and see which two numbers are relatively prime. Which means only the number 1 is common to them in terms of their factors. Come on. So check the first one. So what would be the factors of 9? 1, 3, and 9. 1, 3, and 9. Write it down. 1, 3, and 9. Right? 1, 3, and 9. What about 16? Um, 1, one. 2. Write it down. 1, one 2, two eight. 8. Yeah, 8. 16. 4. Right, sorry. Yes, we missed one, four, <laughs> and 16. So check it out. What is common? One alone. One alone. So by chance, you got the first one. <laughs> so you learn a new concept, all right? Who's next? Player one, we're back at player one. Category. Hmm? Multiples for our 100, that's the only one that remains. And so, which number is a multiple of six? to do player two just two ca just one category remain 200 200 so she's going with 200 great what is the greatest common factor of 45 and 60 greatest common factor not multiple all right greatest common factor 45 and 60. Take your time. So write down the factors of um, 45. Write down the factors of 60 using the primes. And then pick out your greatest common. Alright, you getting somewhere? You two guys, you guys know the answer? Still figuring out. So, so you write, you know, so you write down the factors of 45 and of 60 using the primes. And then you need to know what you need to do next, right? Check for common ones and you write them once. Right. Yeah, 
you got it? Going once, going twice, three times. Come on. And the number is and the highest common factor is Time, time, time. Come on. No, wait. Go, go. I gotta make sure. So, what did you do for four to five? Three and fifteen. Hmm. And then you break 15, down fifteen. You helping her? Fifteen. All right. Fifteen. <laughs> All right, player two, three. three, sorry, player three. You just have the one category remaining, so. What is the greatest common factor here? 12 and 18. Six. Sure, going once, twice, six. Yeah. All right, so let's check. Everybody get the same points. So we have three winners. Huh? We have three winners. So so it means then you have uh, more or less grasped the concepts, right? As it relates to um, factors, uh, multiples, uh, lowest common multiple, and the greatest common factor. All right? So enjoy the game. We can't play anymore, right? <laughs> We're running out of time. So probably in you know, our next session, we're going to go play some more games. Um, so, so what you can do is you go home and you revise um, some of the concepts that we've done, right? So check out your factors. So factors are any two numbers that you multiply, those are factors, right? So for example, uh, so factors, just a recap, two times three, these are factors. Right? Any two numbers that you can multiply or any three numbers that you can multiply, those are factors. When we talk about multiple, right? The multiple is the result that you get when you multiply the factors, right? So if I multiply two by three, I'll get six. So it means six is a multiple of three and it's also a multiple of two. That is what it means. Right? So when we talk, spoke about prime factorization, and we spoke about prime factorization, every number right, can be represented in a unique manner as a product of its prime factor. So that's what we examined earlier. So the number six can be represented uniquely, right? We, use, we can use the tree, the pro, um, this is what we call a, a factor tree. A factor tree. Right? So we start off with the smallest um, prime factor, which would be two and three. So every number, right? Uh, if you're thinking in terms of the natural numbers, right? The natural numbers can be represented as a product of prime factors, right? Or if you're taking in terms of whole numbers, exclusive of zero, right? Those numbers can be represented as product of prime factors as well. All right? All right, okay. So then we, we examined our greatest, greatest common factor. And again, you use the um, prime, the factor tree. All right, you, you express them using the 
prime factorization and then you know how you get your greatest common factor and then today we examine your your LCM which is the lowest common multiple again using our prime factorization method all right so that's it for today um, I hope um, you've enjoyed um, our sessions that we've covered multiples and factors LCM and greatest common factor and how you can use LCM to um, simplify fractions, whether you're adding or subtracting fractions. All right. So thank you for being here and I hope to see you next time. All right. Bye bye.